my name is Stephanie and I work at the Flanders Marine Institute of Lus in Belgium and I'm one of the uh, members of the Worms Data Management Team. So um, we'll have a look at how it relates with fish base and sea web base. So Worms aims to be an authoritative classification and catalogue of marine names. And in the end, all roads lead to Worms. Um, a little bit of background, it all started in 2004 in the framework of MARPEF, which was a European framework program, uh, and then an online European register of marine species was created. And in 2007, this developed further into a world register. So WORMS is not just a name index, but it's an expert-based taxonomic database and we have almost 300 editors at the moment, both taxonomic and thematic. I will come back to that difference later. We also have a steering committee which is elected and it has 12 members and one ex-official member. And then there's the data management team that is based here at FLIS. And FLIS is also the permanent host institute of the database. It's a web-based system, but it also has uh, web services to access the data. And we use, of course, international taxonomic standards. And then, importance to note is that AFIA is the data system behind WORMS. I will come back to that in a minute to explain what the difference is between AFIA and WORMS. So, meet the team. We are five people working uh, on the data management of WORMS. None of us work on that full time. But so we have Lean, Wim, and myself who work on the content and who are the buffer basically between the users of Worms and the experts, the editors. And then we have Bart and Ajija who are the um, IT developers. Next to that, we also have a lot of short term contracts, internships, summer students who work on short projects. And then meet the editors. As you can see on this uh, map, we have quite uh, a large um, distribution of the editors worldwide, but still we lack some areas, for instance, Russia, uh, large parts of Africa, so we still lack um, um, those uh, expertise. Worms, as I said, is part of the AFIA platform. So AFIA is the database behind Worms. What do we have in there? Of course, taxonomy, which is the, the priority, which is the focus of the data system. But we also have distributions, so published distributions, attributes and traits. It's something that uh, for the uh, last few years that we started to collect. We have specimen information, vernacular names, also identification keys if they are available, notes, links and images. And um, as much as possible, we link this to published uh, sources. Important to know as well is that all information that is entered in the database has its own uh, unique identifier. So it's a stable identifier, which is location independent. We call this the AFIA ID for taxonomy, and this is also linked to the life science identifier ID. The AFIA, within the AFIA platform, we have uh, several databases. Importance to note is that the species with its information is only entered once into the database, so it's only entered once into AFIA. But then we connect contexts to that species, and based on those contexts, it appears on a global uh, portal, a regional portal, a thematic portal, etc. So an example. We have here a sponge species, Halicluna sustellaxena. So it's a marine species, so it has the marine context, and therefore it will appear in the uh, online worms interface. It's a sponge, so it will receive the context Porifera, and based on that context, it appears in the online Porifera portal. Similar for it has a, it is a European species, so it will also show up in ARMS, the European register. And lastly, it's an introduced species in certain areas, so we have an introduced portal where um, inf uh, information for introduced species is shown. So the species is only once in the database, but in this case it has four contexts and it shows up in four online portals. So that's a, that's a, a distinction that is um, important to remember. This is 
just an example. Uh, you're probably familiar with the worms interface. So this is um, the, the, the screenshot of the worms interface. This is the peripheral database, how it looks like, and this is the introduced um, register that we have. So now you know how the AFIOC platform uh, looks like, but it doesn't stop there. What we also do is data rescue actions. So those are databases, that are, um, external databases that can no longer be maintained or managed by the host institute for various reasons. There is no longer funding or the responsible um, person has unfortunately passed away. So in those cases, we can rescue these um, data systems in AFIA. Um, previous, uh, the, the most uh, recent ones that we rescued was, for instance, uh, NEMIS, a nematode database, also ERMIN, the interim register of marine and non-marine genera, and the compositite database. So as you can see, the AFIA platform is not only marine, it's only, it also uh, holds um, non-marine species, so freshwater, terrestrial. So data rescue actions is another thing that we do. Then we have several users, uh, systems, projects, even individual people who use AFIA as a quality control tool. And an example there is the EMOPMAT biology project and OBIS. So I'll show you here. So um, EMOPMAT is the European Marine Observation and Data Network. And you have several uh, nodes in there. Biology is one, but you also have one for chemistry, for physics. But the biology project of EMOTNET um, use, uh, takes the taxon name and higher uh, relations, synonyms and attributes from worms and displays it in their uh, data system. Always uh, uses worms as the taxonomic backbone and there's two ways of collaboration there. So worms provides type localities to Obis. And we also clean up the non-matching names of OBs. So all the names in OBs that cannot be matched, the marine names that cannot be matched to uh, worms, we try to annotate them, either if it's a name that does not exist or it's a terrestrial taxon. So we do have we have a list of these non-matching names. Okay, so I will return to this figure. Another group of users are systems that receive data from AFIA. So they basically receive a copy uh, of AFIA or parts of uh, AFIA. Two examples there are the Catalog of Life and Encyclopedia of Life. So for the Catalog of Life, they um, take selected uh, global species databases. So I, I mentioned that, uh, it before. So they take 65 of them that we have avail available. So they don't take the whole of worms, they only take selected uh, global species databases. Um, this is more than 151,000 extant species and more than 9,000 fossil species at the moment. And roughly you can say that about 10% of the catalog of, names, uh, catalog of life species come from worms and avia. Then for Encyclopedia of Life, we have an MOU between the two systems and they um, uh, take basically um, everything from worms except for algae base because we have an, an, a memorandum of understanding with algae base as well that we can display the information in worms but we cannot redistribute it, so that's not included. Um, and the, 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 the data transfer uh, is based on monthly exports in Darwin Core formats. So this is about the users, and then now we have a, a last part, the systems that provide data to AFIA, so we refer to them as externally hosted species databases. And uh, two examples there are fish base and sea life base. So we recognize that fish base and sea life base are very valuable sources and instead of duplicating the efforts, we collaborate with them so that we can display this, their information um, into our system worms and um, into worms. So uh, worms and fish base always have a very strong relationship. And then in 2017, uh, during the, the, the previous uh, fish base symposium, it was also perceived that sea life base is a very valuable source for worms. 
And so in 2018, <coughs> this was formalized in an MOU as well. So what does this MOU say in a nutshell? So worms um, harbors all marine organisms of the world, whereas fish base harbors all the fishes of the world, and then sea life base harbors the marine organisms of the world, with an emphasis for exploited species and their ecosystem. So worms recognizes fish base as the main source for fish information, so taxonomic and other. So worms will take that information from fish base. Vice versa, sea life base recognizes worms as the main source for marine um, information for non-fish. And then lastly, there is also an exchange between worms and sea life base for life traits, life traits data. This last part is not um, very um, grown yet. This is still something that needs to um, be worked at. So um, how does it work? So of course we give credits. Um, this is an example of a species page of the lionfish. So I don't know if you can see it, but here you have a taxonomic citation at the bottom. And there you can see it's um, uh, the fish base uh, citation is the citation for this species in worms. We also have deep links to fish base for the fish species in worms. So here as well, you have here a link to fish, which you to the uh, page of that species in fish base. In a nutshell, you can pick a year you want to harvest. So let's say you want to see for the past year what new information was added to fish base, what were the new species, what species were updated, so you can select a year. And then on the right side, you will have uh, lists that you can go through. Um, and for each list, you can compare um, the species in fish base and the species in, in worms, and then you can manually say um, that you want to uh, synchronize that information. So that's why it's, it's not fully automatic, there's still a manual component um, to it. Of course, um, at the, in the data uh, management team, we, we don't always have the time to do this, to, so we, we um, have students that work on it. For instance, this summer, during July and August, we had one and a half students, yeah, uh, not a half student, but it was only half of his month of work that he worked on this. And so 7,420 new fish names were added to worms based on this harvester, and uh, almost 2,300 names were updated in worms. Um, they covered a certain period. You can see there is um, still a gap uh, there that we have to look at. Also, um, this, um, if, if it's, if it's uh, complicated or they're not really sure if, it, if it's really an updated species or not, you can um, skip the name. So this is also something that we will have to uh, look at. So that's why the, the situation in worms is not always 100% the situation in fish base because we, we lag a little bit. But the idea is to um, harvest everything in the fish base. Um, the synchronization between worms and sea life base, there we don't have a uh, synchronization tool yet. Um, I believe the checks are done manually by the sea life base staff and we do receive feedback and emails from them that we then can forward to our uh, editors. And also currently we don't have any deep links to sea life base, so that's also something that we have to um, look into more. As a very last part, I have to mention LifeWatch, um, because that's the whole, the bigger framework where this story fits into, and also where our funding comes from. So I don't know if you're familiar with LifeWatch, but it's um, uh, part of an, uh, an S3, so a European Strategy Forum on Research Infrastructures. And the LifeWatch EDIC is the European uh, consortium and has several national members, including Belgium. So LifeWatch Belgium is one of the members of the EDIC of LifeWatch. You have to see it as a distributed virtual laboratory with several national nodes. And it's used for biodiversity research, uh, impact studies, uh, to support um, ecosystem services and also to provide information to policymakers. Um, 
Yes, so it integrates existing, existing systems, so databases, web service, modeling tools, um, and it upgrades them where necessary, and also it, uh, where necessary it will create new systems. And one of the activities of LifeWatch Belgium is the creation of a central LifeWatch species information backbone. So that's what I wanted to, what I wanted to tell you. The idea is um, to standardize the species data and to virtually bring together different component databases and data systems. So that's what we are doing now, for instance, at the moment with worms linking it to fish base, linking it to uh, sea life base. Um, I'll just skip this. So uh, basically, the, the species information backbone consists of five components. So you have the species registers. So that's where uh, the whole collaboration worms, fish based, sea life base is uh, situated. Then you have a biogeography uh, component with species occurrences, a literature component, an ecology component, which is the traits, and then also a genetic component. And those five components are all linked together. So what, what we are doing with the data management team, um, so we have our own data data within worms, but we also organize and mobilize taxonomic experts. So we, um, we, we, um, we provide uh, logistic support, we support the taxonomic societies. And the number one here, as I already said, is um, integrating uh, existing databases and building access services to it. That's um, the whole idea what is now happening with, for instance, fish base and sea base. All right, that, that's it for me. Uh, thank you for listening. I don't know if there are any questions.